Length of a line segment. So we're gonna we're gonna review something old today and then learn something new. It's really just formula. Oh, before I talk about that, I'm gonna post this to the blog. Uh, so you can print it out. It's on it's on legal paper, like big big sheet of paper. So you'll have to try to find a way to print it out like that. Or if you just want to use your own sheet of paper next to it. If you just want to use your own sheet of paper, then you could do that too. This is a, the, this unit and the next unit are kind of the same, but we're just splitting them into two parts. Is a pro, guys, is a problem solving unit, okay? And so we're gonna, we're gonna acquire a whole bunch of tools that we're gonna use to solve problems. And then I'm just gonna give you problems. So, you know, we'll do some kind of problem together, but then I'm gonna give you a different one that you have to work through on your own. So sometimes people might say, well, you never showed us this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like I gave you all the skills and we, we walked through some problems on our own, but you're right, every problem is a little bit different. That's, what, that's a big part of what we're learning in this unit is how to problem solve, how to take the tools and skills that we have and apply them in different situations. So if I just showed you how to do every single one, that wouldn't really cut it. So my suggestion is whenever we get a new tool in our tool belt, we write it down on this sheet so you kind of have them all in one place, okay? Um, and, and then by the end of the sort of first unit and definitely by the end of the second, this will all be full of all kinds of different facts and tools and sort of what they accomplish and like the formula. So a lot of the tools are formulas that we're going to look, look at, okay? Uh, and then you have to figure out for every problem how to use those tools in the right way. Does that make sense? Okay, so this will be on the blog. You don't really need it today. We are going to learn, we're going to review one of the tools you already have and learn a new one, but uh, you can write it down afterwards. So look for that on the blog or like I said, your own piece of paper. It doesn't have to be on one sheet of paper. It could be on the front and back of a couple sheets or something. That, whatever works for you. But I think it's a good idea to keep a summary of everything in one place for the student. Okay, so something to think about. How do you find the slope between two points? This is something that you did in grade nine. Well, think about what slope is. So first of all, I go over one up two. Here's, there's point number one. Over seven up four is point number two. You should use a ruler to draw that. I can't really use a ruler on my computer. So uh, there's my line. What is a slope? It's a measure of rise over run. So what is the rise here? It's two. What's the run? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So my rise over run is two over six. But we have a formula how to... Um, how to solve this without counting, which works better because counting doesn't always work. Dylan, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do that in a minute. Yeah. But but the, the slope is 2 over 6. That's okay. So who remembers what the slope formula is? Okay, hold on, hold on. Perfect. Very good. The difference between the y values over the difference between the x values, you've got to make sure you're consistent, you're going the same direction. So y2 and x2 has to be the same point. And y1 and x1 has to be the same point. It doesn't really matter if you call that the first point or that the first point. That won't matter. But you just have to be consistent. Okay, if you do it either direction, it'll be fine. So for example, I could do... So the difference in my y's is 2 minus 4. The difference in my x's is 1 minus 7. And look at that. It's negative 2 over negative 1 minus 7. I was thinking about the answer. <laughs> over negative 6. The two negatives cancel out. So it ends up being positive, just like the slope of that line is positive. You can see it visually. So it better work out that way. 
And when you reduce this, that's right, 2 over 6 becomes 1 over 3. And what's interesting is it does go through, my line does go through another point, especially if it was straight, it would look even nicer, where if I go up 1, I go over 3, and then I go up 1, I go over 3 again. So I do the same slope twice. That's what a slope is, right? Slope from a straight line like that, that's what it is. Okay. If you had done 4 minus 2 over 7 minus 1, same answer. If you flip-flop, if you do 2 minus 4 over 7 minus 1, wrong answer. You get the right numbers, but the wrong sign. So you, that's what I'm talking about, being consistent. This is a review from grade 9. Everybody good with that? Okay. Find the slope between each pair of points. Try, the, try this first one. It is important in this unit where there's a lot of formulas. So whenever you use a formula, you have to write it down. That's like your introductory paragraph. This is what I'm about to do. Now watch me do it. So make sure you're writing down formulas. It's a good habit. Make sure you're writing down formulas when you use them. Yep, you can do them both. I got 4 over 7 for the first one. Is that what other people got? You get 4 over 7? Yeah. The way I did it, I got a negative over a negative, which again gives me a positive. You might have got the other way. If you got negative 4 over 7, then you either flip the points or just got a sign wrong somewhere, so be careful of that. It's, it's, it's very important. Like You saw in the last unit how a negative sign can just throw everything off. So same here. If you get a negative sign wrong calculating slopes, the whole problem is going to fall apart. Okay, so we just got to make sure we brush up our skills and we can do this sort of simpler math without making mistakes. Okay, try the next one if you haven't started already. over negative 8, which simplifies to negative 5 over 4, so we want the negative sign just kind of out front of the, of the slope. The slope is negative. That means it's sloping this way, right? Down to the right, up to the left. That's a negative slope. And 10 over 8 simplifies to 5 over 4, divide them both by 2. See a lot of people got that answer. Very good. That's a review from grade 9, but uh, it applies to what we're doing next, and it's our first tool in our tool belt for this unit. Slope is something that we're often going to have to find. Okay. So take a look at this. When any two points on a Cartesian plane, that's that, that graph that we make, right? With the x and y. So point A and point B, you can find the length of the line from A to B using that formula. So you need to know this formula, but I'm going to give you a little trick on how to make sense of it. Okay, Let's take a look at this question. So 2 and 6. 
and 5 and 3. <coughs> and here's my line. So we're going to find the length of that line. Now what, if you look at that, so just everybody put your pencils down. We like You can draw it, but put your pencil down and just watch. What does that, that part, ignore the rest, what does that part look like? Yeah, x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. That's the same as we were just using for slope. Why were we using it for slope? So if we look back here, we were finding that vertical distance. Right? We were finding the rise, the vertical distance. And x2 minus x1 finds the horizontal distance. Kind of like we're making a little triangle. So if I think about that, for this one, watch what happens if I sort of think about breaking this up into a triangle. What's the length here? It's 3. I can subtract, but I can count it. What's the length here? It's 3. How do I find the length of that hypotenuse given those two side lengths? How many people is that familiar to? This is a right triangle. How do I find the length of a hypotenuse in a right triangle? What do you think? Pythagorean theorem. So three square, the square root of three squared plus three squared, right? You would you would show your work and a squared plus b squared equals c squared and sub it all in. But eventually, that's what you do. We'll take a look at our equation. The length is equal to the square root of the horizontal distance squared plus the vertical distance squared. So this formula is just Pythagorean theorem applied to an xy plane. Some people like to memorize formulas, but if you have a hard time memorizing the formula, think about Pythagorean theorem. You have to know that finding the horizontal distance is subtracting the x's. Like you need to know that, right? So, because you're not always going to be able to graph it and count. What if it's fractions? What if it's decimals? What if it's not nice? What if it's big numbers? You can't graph it. You can't count, right? So you need to know that finding that horizontal length is a difference and you're subtracting, but it's Pythagorean theorem. That gives you the basis of how that formula works. So if I want to apply it to this case, the length of CD is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1, so 5 minus 2, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, so 3 minus 6, all squared. Okay, so just watch up here. I'm going, to, I'm going to show a couple of things. I can do this all in one shot if I go like this. Square root bracket. And then I have to do bracket again. What was the first one? 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 bracket all squared plus, what was it, 3 minus 6? Yeah. 3 minus 6 bracket all squared, but it gives me a nasty decimal. So we're going to go for an exact answer like we were talking about yesterday. So I can punch it all in. Sometimes that might work. So what's 5 minus 2? It's 3. What's 3 minus 6? It's negative 3. 
as long as the negative is in brackets, it doesn't matter. What's 3 squared? 9. What is bracket negative 3 bracket squared? That's negative 3 times negative 3, which is also positive 9. You, you never get a negative value in this because we're squaring the whole thing, right? So recall negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. If you left the brackets out of your calculator, negative 3 squared, it's going to give you negative 9 because the brackets are important. So you need to know it's a length that's always positive. If you get a negative number, you can just ignore it and use the positive version if you, know, if you understand what you're doing. So that's this. Uh, I don't want red. That's the square root of 9 plus 9. Square root of 18. And if we want an exact answer, what, am I, what do I have to do? So that equals the square root of 9 times 2, which is 3 root 2. So there's my exact and then oh, 3 root 2, sorry, yeah, thank you. So 4.2 2.4 approximately, and that's rounded to two decimal places, obviously. Like I said, the instructions will tell you what you're supposed to do. Okay, It'll say if it wants exact answers. It'll say if it wants rounded to one or rounded to two decimal places. If it was a word problem, then sometimes you just know two decimal, like if it's money, two decimal places no matter what, right? If it's a word problem, you might have to use a little bit of your own judgment what kind of answer to give. But almost always the instructions will tell you what it's looking for. Film. I punched into my calculator. Everybody get that? Length of a line segment. So it's a formula from Pythagorean theorem. If you think about the graph, that helps us visualize why it's coming from Pythagorean theorem. That helps to memorize the formula. We need to know what the formula is. And on the back of your page, you've got the rest of this. We need to know what the formula is, and we need to know what it does. Okay? It's kind of obvious. It calculates the length of the line segment. But think about what that means. Because that will help us um, know when to use it. Okay, yes. Um, okay, try the next two. Try these ones. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is sketch it. Sketching it allows us to sort of analyze and picture what's happening and think about uh, how to do these things. So let's sketch it. So 1, 7, that's point A. Point B is 8, 3. Point C is 5, 1. So use your ruler to draw a nice triangle.
How do we find the area of a triangle? Andy. If you're base times height divided by two. Base times height divided by two. What are the base and the height? They are lengths. We know how to find lengths of line segments now. But what do we, but before you do that, this is an important detail of this stuff. What it has to be true of the base and the height of a triangle? This is a, that's a trickier kind of question, right? They have to be at a right angle to each other, okay? So the base and the height of a triangle have to be at a right angle to each other. This is a right triangle. So two of these sides are at a right angle to each other. Which two do you think it is? Like, where do you think the right angle is? Yeah, Matthew. Yeah, so it looks like the right angle is at C, but here's the lesson. You are not allowed to make assumptions. You are not allowed. We have to show that that's the right angle. How are we going to do that? What, what, like, what do we know about right angles? They're 90 degrees. Good. What else? What are the two tools that we have so far? Length and no. What was the other tool that we covered today in this lesson? Slope. That's our tool. Slope, we can find slope and we can find length. Those are our two tools. Okay? Um, how does slope relate to right angles? from grade nine. Sir? Which when what are perpendicular slopes? Do you know the, do you remember that? But how do what do, what do their slopes look like? Do you remember this term negative reciprocal? Remember that? So you in grade nine you you do something like find the equation of a line perpendicular to this line through the point such and such. Remember doing that? So you've seen this before. So slopes that are at right, ang or at right angles to each other, lines that are at right angles, have negative reciprocal slopes. So I have to show that the slope of line AC is at a right angle to the slope of line BC. How am I going to do that? I'm going to find their slopes. Because I graphed it, I, I don't have to do AB. I only have to find the two slopes that are at a right angle. Show that they're at a right angle. Then I can proceed to find the area of the triangle. Ben, you had your hand up? Um, I was going to say that, so if you were to say the slope of AC equals slope, how would you write that in? We're going to calculate it. We're going to do it just like this. So slope equals, I use little m for slope. Again, this is going to be important. Okay, trust me. Use little m for slope. Y2 minus Y1. Why are all these lines over x2 minus x1? Then I'm going to do slope of AC. Whoops. So y2 is 1, y1 is 7, over 5 minus 1. Negative 6 over 4 negative 3 over 2. Each question is like a little mini essay that you're doing. So when I started this question, I wrote down the slope formula with my little m. And then when I say little m of ac, I don't have to rewrite the formula. So I'm going to do this, little m of bc. And I don't have to rewrite the formula. You've got to write it once, but you don't have to write it every time per question. Does that make sense? But a new question, you'd have to write it again. So BC would be uh, 1 minus 3 over 5 minus 8. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. So that's positive 2 over 3. Those are negative reciprocal because one's negative, one's positive. One's 3 over 2, the other's 2 over 3. That's what negative reciprocal, reciprocal means. It means opposite signs and flipped fraction. So, yes. So, therefore, AB is perpendicular to BC since 
their slopes are negative reciprocal. I found the two lines that are at a right angle. That's my base and my height. Now I can go ahead and find the length of those. So how do I find the length? Because I need the length to find the area, right? So how do I find the length? Square root x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Yeah, sure. It's really important that you get the formulas now because in a couple of days we're going to add another formula. And then it starts to get confusing because they're all kind of the same, but then they're also all kind of different. Like sometimes you're adding, sometimes you're subtracting, sometimes you're using x's, sometimes you're using y's. So it's every time it's sometimes we square, sometimes we don't. It's all a little bit different. Once we add them all in, it starts to get a bit confusing. So make sure that you get the formulas down now. Don't wait till later. Ben. Yeah. No, this is good. Saying AB is perpendicular to BC covers us. No, 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 you have to plug in the points, A and B and B and C, right? So watch, so I'm gonna find length of AB first, finding the length between two points, right? Not between two slopes. So, I'm, so I wrote down my slope formula, I'm finding the slope of AB, if you look at the points, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. There's some similarities with the slope. Like you're going to get some of the same numbers, but we're not writing them as a fraction. We're doing something else, right? I'll do something wrong. Oops. Oh, A, B, that's why. I don't want to do A, B. I hope you weren't copying me. I made a mistake. I'll do A, C first. So 16 squared, sorry, 4 squared, which is 16, plus 6 squared, which is 36, square root of 52. Which is the square root of 4 times 13, so 2 root 13. Okay, and then length of B, C. And then finally, area equals base times height divided by 2, or 1 half base times height, which is the, it uh, doesn't really matter which one we call the base, but probably people think of BC as the base. So the square root of 13 times AC, which is 2 times the square root of 13 divided by 2. Now something kind of cool happens here. You probably won't see this and necessarily quite get it, but again, this is where some of that practice with radicals happen. Because I'm multiplying everything, the twos are going to divide to one. And I get the square root of 13 times the square root of 13. 
What's the square root of 13 times the square root of 13? This is something that we did yesterday. The square root of 169, which is 13. Square root of a times the square root of a is a. Square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is 13. Square units, right? We don't have units, so don't worry too much about units. But centimeter squared, meter squared, whatever it is. Yes, Parker. A B is the length of a different line. We need the two lines to find the area. We need the two lines that are at a right angle to each other. So we need to use those two lines. Any questions about that? There's your homework. You're not going to get too many trickier ones like that, but there's sort of a little bit. But we're going to do more problem solving like that last question tomorrow. Okay, so that's the kind of problem solving where you have to think, oh, I have to find slope. Oh, I have to find length. That's the kind of problem solving that we're going to do. We did.